says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. So today, I want to look at the I Am statement that fits best for this Easter Resurrection Sunday from John 11, 25. When Jesus said this, and I want you to repeat this with me. I am the what? I am the resurrection and the life. Say it again. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. I am the resurrection. Yeah. So a resurrection, which we all know this, is just to be clear, is when something dies and then that thing comes back to life. That is the resurrection. So today we came to celebrate the greatest story ever told, ever read, ever preached. And I'm focusing on this verse right here when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And when he said this, a lot of people don't understand that he actually said it in the context of a much broader story about another guy who died but didn't stay dead. His name was Lazarus. And I want to read you that story, then we're going to look at three different ways that many of us die on the inside and see uh, how the resurrection of Jesus brings what's dead back to life. This is exactly why this is the best Sunday of the year. It's a celebration of dead things coming back to life. It's the celebration of hope that we find in knowing that Jesus Christ stopped some devil behind so we can live a powerful, victorious life for eternity. Can we just get excited about that for a minute? Yeah, and a lot, that's why we, I'm excited to preach this today. And listen, I was just getting ready to say, Sarah, just preach to girl. Just go ahead. I ain't got to say a word. Just preach that thing. I'm like, hallelujah. I love it when people just, just obey the Lord. And, you know, it's, it's really not about money anyway. It's about the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's just us being obedient. I'm not, I'm not saying I don't want your money. I'm just saying. <laughs> John 11 is where I'm going to be preaching from today. And I would like for all of us, if we could, just turn there or turn our device and, and click there or whatever you do to get there. But just follow along today, if you will. I'm going to put my main verse behind me and leave it there and for most of the service. And I hope that's okay today. But this is what the Bible says. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. We're going to find out he wasn't just sick, but he was so sick that he was going to die. And he was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha, uh, verse 3 says. So the sister sent to Jesus, sent word to Jesus in verse 3. And what did they tell him? They said, Lord, the one you love is sick. This was the bad news in the middle of a good life. And unfortunately, if I can pause for a minute, I, I, I acknowledge, although there are a lot of people here that are celebrating a lot of great things in this season of your life, there are a lot of people that are hurting right now, that have heard some similarly bad news. In fact, maybe uh, some of you have even heard maybe that very direct bad news. The one that you love is sick. Someone that you're close to has cancer or something very bad has happened or maybe some of you heard the news that the job that you love is downsizing and you're going to be getting a pink slip so you need to look for another job or your, your dream marriage turned into a nightmare or maybe a close friendship it may not be working out the way you had hoped that it would or the principal calls and talks to you about your teenager and has not to tell you that they made the honor roll. You know what I'm saying? So you got some bad news, something that's not favorable. I've had my share of these types of stories being in the ministry 22 years. I've sat down with family members in hospitals, and the doctor brings them the bad news that it doesn't look good. There's only a few hours left. You need to call in the family. You need to come. Your sister may not make it through this surgery. Your loved one has a tumor that's inoperable. Your wife has cancer. You're, you're not type 2. You're actually type 1. I sat through, Lord, you're, the one you love is sick. Now, in the middle of this, Jesus says something that's amazing. Watch what he says in verse 4. He said, when he heard the news, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. Then he goes on to say, no, it's for God's glory that God's Son may be glorified through it. I feel a preach coming right there. This very thing that you're going through, the devil trying to tell you it's going to be the end of you. But I came on this resurrection morning to tell you this thing will not. Hold on. <laughs> Glory to God. We'll 
We'll come back to that in a minute. Let me give you a quick summary, verse 5 through 14. You can read it on your own if you like, but basically everybody believes Jesus is going to come help. But what does he do? Nothing. <laughs> For two days, he says, nothing. He hangs, they're freaking out, and he's hanging out. Two days later, he says to his son, hey, well, let's, let's go back to Judea. Let's, let's just, and they said, no, you know what? That might not be a good idea because everybody's going to try and kill you, which would, would be true. But Jesus says this, no, Lazarus is falling asleep and we need to go wake him. What he was really saying is he's dead and we need to go raise him from the dead. What I want to do is look at three different characters of the story. One disciple named Thomas, which I talked about briefly last week. Um, and then I want to look at Mary, one of the sisters, and the other sister, Martha. We're going to see three different ways that we die. We die. We're dying on the inside. And I believe today some of you can relate to what we're going, what, they're, what they were going through. Let's start with Thomas. Number one, he was dead in his doubts. He was doubting Thomas. All through Scripture, he was known as doubting Thomas. In fact, we see this in verse 16. Then Thomas said to the rest of the disciples, he said, "Let us go that we may die with him." He was being sarcastic. He was being, "Let us go so we may die with him." He's doubting. He said, "This is never going to turn out good at all." So I'm curious this morning, on this resurrection morning, have any of you ever had any spiritual doubts at some point in your lives? Go ahead and raise your hand. Any spiritual doubts? Amen. Hallelujah. Those that didn't raise your hand, you can just sit there and polish your little, you know, halo, and we'll just have church. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody I know, at some point, you prayed and believed God could and thought he would and didn't do anything, and now you're bombarded with doubts. Why didn't he do this? Well, perhaps you believed in God and something really bad happened to somebody that you really loved and you thought, well, if God is so good and he's so awesome and he's so majestic, why didn't he heal my, my loved one? Why did he let this happen? If he's all powerful, why didn't he just stop it? And suddenly you're like Thomas, you're doubting. There's something on the inside that's a little bit dead in our doubts this morning. Or maybe some of you are like more like Mary. You're, number two, you're dead in your discouragement. You don't see anything good happening. You just can't seem to get a break. Mary was very discouraged when she sees it in verse 20. She said, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet Jesus. But what did Mary do? Mary stayed at home. She's like, why bother? I don't, have, I don't need to go out there. I mean, he's already dead. There's nothing can be done about it. The situation's over. And that may, and then I, that, that may be you this morning. That may be some of you this morning just sitting here thinking, I can't change anything. I'm always going to feel alone. I'm always going to be depressed. I'm always going to be stuck in this dead-end job. I'm never going to have the marriage that I thought I would have. So I'm just kind of, I'm stuck, Pastor. I'm just discouraged. Some of you, that may be where you are right now. You're not going to show it because it's Easter morning. You put on your nice dress clothes and you put on some good clothes and you, you got the Christian language going. Somebody asks you how you're doing. Hey, praise the Lord. I'm doing good. Hallelujah. He's alive. Thank you, Jesus. And you're smiling on the outside. But on the inside, you're really discouraged. So some of you are doubting Thomas and some of you are discouraged Marys. And, but now Mar 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 Martha, though, maybe you can relate to her. She was dead in her delay. God took too long. Jesus should have come back earlier, and he did. Why did he take so long? Verse 17, we see this. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for how long? For four days. So in her mind, Lazarus wasn't just mostly dead. He was all the way dead. He was dead and then some. In the King James Version said, he surely he stinketh by now. Verse 11, Lord Martha said, if you had been here, my brother, he wouldn't have died. You took too long. Why didn't you do this when you could have done something about it? You're Jesus. You're the Messiah. Why did my loved one have to die? You could have been here. All you had to do is snap your fingers and show up. But you took too long. And some of you right now, you can relate. You feel dead in your delay. You're waiting on some answer to prayer, some result. Single ladies waiting on your Prince Charming, tired of being the bridesmaid, ready to be the bride. You're tired of setting everything else up. Somebody look at it and you're like, I want my shot. Some of you are praying for a loved one to experience the goodness of God. And the harder you pray, the more it seems like they get farther away. And you wonder, why God? Why do all of her family members come to Jesus and get saved? And here mine are still eating slop with the pigs. You're discouraged. 
you're discouraged and you're delayed. And I know a lot of people that are praying and believing that God could actually heal someone because I believe that, that we serve a God that says all things are possible, yet you pray and pray and pray and you pray and, and God's just not doing it for you. And you feel dead in your delay this morning. If that's you, I hope that this will speak to you and you'll never ever forget that God's delays are not God's denials. God's delays are not God's denials. Just because God hasn't done something yet doesn't mean that God's not still in charge. And he has a plan that he may be glorified in the future through the very thing you're going through today. In fact, just for Easter, I want to show you this something that's just so awesome. It's, it's, it's today's God's a beast, bro, moment. Okay? I always say God's a beast. He just, he just blows my mind. Things that he does and things that I see, I'm like, God's just, he's a beast, bro. So this is just your, this is your God's a beast, bro, moment for today. In John chapter 11, there's a death of Lazarus, everything bad, the doubting Thomas, uh, the, the, the depressed Mary, the anger of Martha, all that happens up until verse 22. Everything bad up until verse 22. And one verse later, the whole tone of everything shifts at verse 23. See, we all out here in Northeast Ohio, we like the number 23. I mean, I mean come on, we know, we know 23. We, we think about 23, we think about LeBron James. We, okay, we, that's just what we automatically go to. But if you're a mighty man here, sometimes we can go to the other, the other guy who stuck out his tongue and had a lot more championships with LeBron and, and Michael Jordan. So, you know, that's just, that's just what I'm talking about. So when you hear the number 23, that automatically what you go to. But I have another 23 for you. Watch what happens here. And I'll read to you what Martha said. Verse 22 is what she said. Everything's bad. Everything's bad. If you would have been here. But verse 23, she says this. But I know that even now. But I know that even now. I'm going to give it to you one more time. Hmm. But I know that even now, Hallelujah. God will give you whatever you ask. Amen. So Jesus, he looks at you and says, I know that even now, even though we're dead in our delay, we're dead in our discouragement, we're dead in our doubts, I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask him. Some of you need to have an even now moment with you. You're stuck on 22, and it's time to go one more verse. Let that 23 anointing get all over you today. Let the 23 faith come alive and believe that even now, all things are possible with God to hit that belief. I believe that somebody's going to receive a verse 23 miracle in this place today. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout, even now. Even now. Say it again. Even, even now. now. Even now, when you are discouraged, the presence of God can come in and build your faith. Even now, when you feel all alone, like there's no one there, the presence of the Holy Spirit can give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. Even now, our oh God can reach into your jacked up family and bring healing and harmony and forgiveness and restoration. Even now, when everything looks impossible, we serve a God who says all things are possible. Even now, when your heart may be cold and callous toward the things of God, our oh God in a moment can soften your heart and draw you into his presence like ever before. Jesus did in verse 23. He told Martha, your brother will rise again. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. Martha, and Martha asked, she thought she knew something. She answered and said, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection in the last days. See, she was confused. She was thinking a different resurrection. And Jesus said in verse 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He didn't say... <laughs> He didn't say, I'm able to resurrect. But he said, I am the resurrection. He didn't say, I am able to heal you, Jeff. He said, I am healing. He didn't say, I am able to save. I am salvation. The one who believes in me will even though you, they, they die. Whoever believes in me, by believing in me, will never die. Do you believe this? She said, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe that, somebody give it praise right now. I am the resurrection yeah. and the life. Here's what I want you to understand this morning. The resurrection is not an event. It is a person. I could drop Mike right there. It is not an event. It's not what he does. Right. It's who he is. Yes. <laughs> dead things don't stay dead when resurrection enters the room. Right. Right. 
You walked in here with an addiction. You walked in here getting your sins. But well, resurrection is in the room. You, that thing, you can't stay dead when resurrection is in the room. It is not an event that we go to on an Easter Sunday morning. It is a person in Jesus Christ who conquered death, hell, and the grave, who rose for you and you and you. That it is a person. I am the resurrection and life. Hallelujah. That dead thing cannot stay dead this morning. And at the resurrection, Jesus looks at the tomb where Lazarus is stinking, and he said to the disciples, take the stone away. And when he did that, in verse 43, Jesus called out in a loud voice. I don't know if the dead people just can't hear it, or they just, I don't know why. The, the loud voice just has to be a loud voice. I don't think they just, just can't hear it, I guess. I don't know. Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and clothes around his face. Jesus said, take off the grave clothes. Loose him and let him go. When Jesus brings you out, that thing that was on you can't come with you. Take off the sin, take off the addiction, take off the sickness, take off the pain. And I love the, the contrast of these two stories. Jesus is dead in the tomb, there's a stone blocking it. Lazarus is dead in the tomb, there's a stone blocking it. When Jesus goes to Lazarus, he tells the disciples, throw the stone away. When Jesus is in the tomb, the women walk up in the morning, uh, excuse me, what's going on? Who's going to roll the stone away? And some of you, you're feeling dead on the inside. You've lost faith. You've lost hope. You're dead in your delay. You're dead in your discouragement. You're dead. You've got doubts. You feel trapped in a tomb. And you feel like you don't have the strength to roll the stone away this morning. But on this Easter resurrection morning, I want you to remember that Christ has rolled the stone away. And the same boy that, voice that called Lazarus to come out is telling you to come out. Come out, come out, come out of your bondage, come out of your depression, come out of your addiction, come out of your dead, dry religion. The voice is screaming, your sins can be forgiven, not because you're good, but because he's good. You can be set free, not because you're strong, but because he's strong. You can feel his presence, not because you deserve it, but because he's that good. The resurrection is not what he does, it's who he is. And you can come out of your mess this morning if you choose to. Somebody give me praise in this house. Some of you right now, you're stuck, I'm telling you, you're stuck on 22. And you got every excuse running through your mind right now. Well, yeah, but if God was so good, then why did I have to go through this? If God is so good, then why did my wife have to go through cancer? Well, yeah, she did, but you know what? We kept reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't stop at verse 22. Yeah, we read verse 23, our, foul, our face shouted, yeah! And she's cancer free today. Come on, somebody. It's all for you choose. You can choose to read the discouragement and the hell that you're going through. And oh, why me? Why do I have to go through this? Oh, poor. Give me a pity party. Call the prayer chain. Get ready to share and pray for me. I stubbed my toe today. You can choose whatever you want to believe. But I choose to keep reading. I will not stop at 22. I will read verse 23 all day, but even now, but even now, whatever it looks like, even now I choose to believe that my God can heal me. My God can recreate my paper. My God can heal me of my type. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the doctor's saying. I don't care how many shots I got to take. All I know is that my God is healing. He is resurrection. He has a power to do it. touch from God, you can go from a depressed 22 to a shouting 23 miracle. Hallelujah. And I, listen, I'm not here to tell you that everything's perfect at verse 23 and everybody's healed and everybody lives forever and your hair never falls out and your body's perfect and you win the lottery and you know all that stuff. I'm not here to tell you all that. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm telling you is this. At verse 23, God is always glorified on what happened before verse 22 because he's that good. He's that good. 
So Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Some of you, you're dead in your sins. That's what the Bible says. You're dead in your sins. But because of what he did, and not because we could ever earn it or deserve it, our sins could be forgiven and you could be made brand new today. It's called the gospel. It's the good news that God did something that we couldn't do for ourselves because he's that good. The tomb is empty. He is risen and the resurrection changes everything. I am the resurrection life. Whoever believes in me will never die. My question for you today is this. How many of you are here ready to choose life today? How many are ready to choose life today? Hallelujah. I choose life every chance. How many are ready to go from a verse 22? Yes. Depression, messed up, discouraged to a 23 miracle. Hallelujah. 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 Stand all over this building this morning. Maybe you've got some doubts. Maybe you've got some, you're wondering why God hasn't done what you thought he should do for you. Maybe you're stuck on verse 22, complaining about that, living in defeat. Today you're going to have a life-changing encounter, and you will have a relationship from this day forward with Jesus Christ. And listen, I will be honored to pray with you. Here's what I want you to know. When Jesus died, your past died. When Jesus died, your sins died. When Jesus died, your darkness died. When Jesus died, your captivity died. When Jesus died, your failure died. But when he rose, when he got up, your salvation came to life. Your deliverance came to life. Your healing came to life. Your light came to life. Your peace came to life. Your miracle came to life. Your eternity came to life. Today, will you choose Jesus? Will you make a decision today to get up and choose eternity? Choose the kingdom of God. Choose healing. Choose peace. Choose your miracle. Don't wait till next week. You're here today and you're in the presence of resurrection. You're in the very presence of resurrection. And that dead thing in your life, you don't have to live with that no more. That addiction in your life, you don't have to live with that no more. Because that, your life, listen, is worth so much that Jesus Christ chose to go to the cross, chose to be beaten, chose to die a brutal death with a crown of thorns pressed into his skull. He chose that for all of you, for me. He paid the price for your salvation so you can have eternity forever with him. With him. It's not about, it's not about a religion. Just because you came here does not make you saved. about knowing Jesus Christ and having a relationship with him. It's about praying a prayer. Yes, but it's more than just a prayer. It's about praying a prayer and repenting. Turning away and choosing. I'm not going to stay dead. Yeah. I choose life today. Yeah. Every day.